Welcome to Real Answers for Real Artists. We have a question today from a visual artist named Eric, and he writes this from Iowa saying, How can a Christian artist help their church through art without the church unwittingly cheapening its potential? That is, what kinds of conversations are necessary and appropriate? Or should an artist who's a Christian say, like Paul to the Jews, since you will not listen, I'll just go to the world. And I'm glad you asked these questions, Eric, because what I hear you saying is you want to contribute to the church in a meaningful way, not just utilitarian, cheap, kitschy stuff that we see sometimes. And if the church doesn't understand how to utilize your gift, is it better just to say, I'll go to the world, knowing you have something meaningful to say? Now, many artists feel exactly the way you do, Eric. We get this comment often. Some have stuck with the church, and tried to help educate members of the church, but unfortunately many have left because they simply feel unloved or misunderstood. But there is hope because this issue can be addressed in exactly the way you suggest, with the right conversations between you and the church leadership. Now, you know, often... The real tension between what you as an artist and your pastor as a spiritual leader consider to be the model for ministry as a whole is the issue, not just the use of visual art. And a great model for us to look at is the model from the book of Hebrews, where we see there are three categories of spiritual leadership, or what scholars call three offices of Christ, the prophet, the priest, and the king. Now, the easiest way to think about this as the office of prophet is really about truth, the office of priest is really about compassion, and the office of king is really about function, uh, efficiency, those kinds of concerns. And if you think about it, in the Old Testament we have examples of these. For kings we have Solomon and David. Uh, for prophets we have Jeremiah and Isaiah. And for priests we have Aaron, Moses' brother, or uh, later on Eli. And all of these are examples of these offices. But something changed as we went in the New Testament radically. And it's there we're told that all of these three offices prefigure or point to Christ. And that he held all three offices perfectly. Now, of course, Christ is perfect. We're not going to be able to imitate perfectly what he does in any of the three offices. And typically, we're only able to do one or two of these offices. But think about it this way. If your church leadership is more like a priest, they will have a priority on compassion and forgiveness. So they'll be drawn to art, which is comforting to those experiencing pain, a bit more therapeutic, this kind of thing. If, on the other hand, your church leadership is more like a prophet, they'll prefer artwork which is hard-hitting, uh, confrontational, challenging people to awaken from their sin, to repent, these kinds of things. And if your church leaders are more kingly, well, then they're going to want artwork which is functional. And so they're going to want things that support the mission trip and do a documentary or create brochures that are more efficient in communicating the gospel or some new outreach. Now, you need to remember all three are valid, but no single approach is sufficient. So the key questions you need to ask yourself before you approach the church leadership are first what kind of art do you create? Is it more like a prophet, a priest, or a king? And then secondly, what kind of gifts do you see in the leaders in your church? What kind of gifts do they exhibit in relation to these three voices? Think about it. If your voice as a prophet, priest, or king does not match the voice of the church leadership, you're probably going to experience tension as you seek to contribute artwork to the life of your church. For instance, an artist who wants to awaken people from sin like a prophet will experience tension in a church where the leaders are really priests and they want something more therapeutic. Of course, those who are creating artwork which is priestly may not fit easily with a church that's focused on kingly ministry, who are more focused on efficiency and programmatic concerns. So you see, to whatever degree you and your pastor have different strengths in these three offices of Christ, you will probably experience tension, but the great part is within that tension, there's a great opportunity to complement one another and experience more of what Christ longs to do in our communities. Now, the reality is this. 
God calls each of us to minister to the rest of the body with our gifts. It doesn't matter for a prophet, priest, or king. No matter which voice you or your pastor have, we all need to submit to a biblical model in how we pursue this. Think of it like a, a husband and a wife. They're designed by God to serve one another in their differences, not remain stagnant or stubborn in their preferences. It's how do we complement and love each other. Each gift has its own strength, but without the others to balance it out, any gift can be overemphasized and then unhealthy. If we're only interested in being prophets, we'll speak the truth without love, and we will wound people. If we're only priests, we will love people but fail to confront them in their sin and fail to take holiness serious. And if we're only kings, we'll focus on checklists and programs and efficiency, forgetting to simply love each other in the process. So, if we're to communicate the full gospel, the full richness of the gospel, we need to embrace all three offices of Christ. In fact, we need to use our gifts in community with others so that we become more and more Christ-like as we learn from those around us. So, having understood this, once you've evaluated your own artwork, go to the church leadership and find out where they fit. And as the dialogue opens up, share which office of Christ your artwork embodies and explore how you and your pastor can work together to minister to your entire church body. That's the focus. And I'll leave you with two things to keep in mind. First, have compassion. Being a pastor is hard work. And secondly, persevere in caring for the church. It is Christ's bride for whom he died. Remember that. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for your question, Eric, and thank you for sending it to Real Answers for Real Artists.